video on how to install SQL Server for your MacBook M1 and M2. I'll take you through the step-by-step -step process to get this done on any of the newer Macs based on the ARM architecture. So we prob probably won't be able to use the um, official SQL Server Management Studio. So the way to get around that is um, to use another Microsoft product called Azure Data Studio along with a Docker image of um, the SQL Server software which can then run on the ARM architecture which would otherwise not be possible. So let's get into it. So step one is to install Docker for Mac. So to install Docker for Mac just go to your browser and search Docker and open the first link you see and you should see download docker desktop for um, apple on the intel chip but you want to choose the apple chip and the download should begin it's quite a big download so it might just take some time so i'll uh, skip forward to once that's done okay so as you can see the download for the docker download is finished i'm just gonna open the file drag it into the applications probably this is just the standard process for any um, Mac application that you've downloaded straight off the internet and yeah it's just extracting the files and there we go once um, it's done. You should be able to uh, see it in your launch pad. So yeah, I've got it right here. We're just going to open it up just to make sure that it's running. Yeah. And so we have a Docker downloaded fully. It'll take a while to start up. And during that time, we can move on to step two. So step two is installing Azure Data Studio. So to install Azure Data Studio, again, go to your browser and just search Azure Data Studio. The first link you see um, brings you to Microsoft's documentation. And in there, you should see a zip file link to download um, download Azure Stu Data Studio on Mac OS. So yeah, again, just choose the zip file and the download should begin. Another big download, but not as big as Docker. So we'll skip to once that's complete. So as you can see, the Azure Data Studio download is completed. I'm going to open this file again. Yeah, and now as you can see, it's uh, been downloaded. We can probably move it to the Applications folder. And once it's moved to the applications folder, you open your launch pad and you should see it here. So um, I'm just going to open it and extract the files. Yeah, so it's booting up. So as you can see, Azure Data Studio is finally opened up. It took about two, three minutes. So if it's taking some time, don't worry. And since I've done it before, this is the page that I see. But normally you might have a few basic initialization pages where you probably cho just choose the default options and then you reach this stage. So once you've reached this stage, you're ready to minimize this and move on to step three. Step three is creating a docker id so we head back to the uh, docker website where we downloaded the mac application from click on sign in and sign up if you don't have uh, a docker id already so if you don't have one probably just create one and then we can move on to step four so once you've signed in on the Docker website, I mean, once you've created an account and signed in on the Docker website, you can come to your Docker application and just using the same account, 
sign in here as well and once you click sign in it will take you um, to safari and then have you sign in there so just complete that process once you've signed in on the docker website uh, sorry on the docker mac application you should see your username up there in the corner and another thing that you just want to check is you click on the settings button and you've come to resources and you just want to make sure that your resources are pretty much the same as you can see here and specifically memory so you need approximately 4 GB to run a SQL server image so make sure you've got that and then you can move on to step 4 step 4 of the process is to download the official Microsoft SQL uh, container image so to do that again you navigate to the docker website and in the search bar just search Azure SQL Edge so just what I'll put in whatever I've typed there and scroll down until you see Azure SQL Edge and the main thing to notice is that it should be written by Microsoft and you want to copy this terminal command and head over to your terminal and put that in there and run the command so it begins pulling the image so once the docker pull finishes extracting uh, you should see um, all these pull completes right here and that means you're good to go also in the docker application you should see uh, inside the images tab you should see a new sort of file created here so what we're going to do now is move on to step 5 which is to run the SQL image inside a docker container so this is probably the trickiest part of the whole process and what you want to do here is uh, paste in this exact command which um, I'm showing you here I'll put this exact command um, in the uh, description to the video below so you want to make sure you copy this without any mistakes and the only thing you want to change really is this um, password inside the angle brackets that you see here so I'm gonna uh, put my password in and and you could probably also change uh, the user where you see SA and but that's up to you but if you change it make sure you remember it because you need it later on and once you've changed the password you can probably just execute the query and you should see that the docker image is now in use as it says here you've got uh, your docker image in use there's only one step remaining which is to connect Azure Data Studio to this docker image of SQL Server and to do that you want to open up Azure Data Studio and click on create a connection so once you have clicked on create a connection what you want to do is leave connection type as Microsoft SQL Server and in the server um, for server you should write localhost authentication type leave it as SQL login username should be uh, SA as it was for us when we ran the query and for the password um, put in whatever strong password you had used and you want to click on remember password and then just connect and the minute you see this green light you know that um, um, yeah, you've connected to the local host and that your SQL server is working so now you can see the the master you can see the four databases master model msdb and tempdb and yeah so all uh, the system tables are working and now you can query data
to show you that SQL Server is working properly. I've uh, written some simple queries just to uh, uh, take you through the process. So here we are. So first we're just gonna create a simple table persons in MasterDB and refresh tables yeah and we should see the uh, the new table coming up there the next we can insert a couple of rows of data into our table yeah and that looks like it succeeded as well and now let's just query some data as you can see that's working fine and with the condition also working fine so now you know now you can use sql server on your macbook with um, an m1 or an m2 chip one thing to note is that um, if this process doesn't work sometimes maybe what you could do is uh, install rosetta which is apple's um, x86 emulator for arm and maybe then try the process again but otherwise this should work for you and another thing to note is that um, the AdventureWorks um, sample database won't be available to you off the bat I'll be making a video about how to get that added um, to SQL Server on your Mac uh, which would be a follow-up video to this so yeah, hopefully I'll see you there. Now that you've got SQL Server all set up and running, happy querying to you. Um, thanks for watching this video. And please do like this video and subscribe to my channel as it helps me continue making videos like this for you. So we hope to see you back again soon.